Thank you, team. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. What a year we have had. What a year we are still having. Who would have guessed a year ago on Christmas Eve the things that we would have endured in 2020, the things that would have changed? And yet, in light of all of the chaos and all of the noise, we are gathered here today in person and online to celebrate Christmas. It seems as though Christmas didn't watch the news this year, that Christmas just didn't pay attention to the chaos of our world and just invaded. And in that sense, this Christmas is not all that different from the Christmas that happened about 2,020 years ago when Jesus, the Son of God, took on flesh and came to live among us. And that's what we celebrate at Christmas. And here at Edgewater Alliance Church, we call Jesus' coming to earth the greatest mission trip of all time. <coughs> it included the greatest mission and the greatest missionary. The mission was this, to reconcile humanity to God. Because you see, when God created the world, the scriptures tell us that he created it good. That the world was good and the people in it were good. And God created us to have a relationship with him. And he also gave us the gift of free will. The ability to choose. And mankind leveraged that ability to choose wrongly and chose instead of walking with God to turn their backs on God and to rebel against God. And in so doing, humanity invited the consequences of their rebellion, what the Bible would call sin, into the world. And these are things that we experience, things like death, and disease, and decay, and divorce, and ultimately, separation from God for all eternity. And after we had turned our backs on God and rejected him, God too had a choice to allow us to endure the consequences that we authentically deserved or to intervene and to save us from ourselves, to save us from our sin. And the scriptures say that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And so Jesus came, he took on flesh, he moved into our world, he came as a baby, and that's what we celebrate on Christmas. But baby Jesus didn't remain a baby. Jesus grew into a man who would show us what being human was actually supposed to look like. And Jesus would lead a sinless life. He would never sin. He would never rebel. And that qualified him to be the substitution for all of humankind so that when Jesus grew and he died on a cross. He absorbed the wrath of God. He took the punishment of the world upon himself so that people like you and I could go free. And so when we're talking about Christmas, we are talking about the greatest gift of all time that God would give his one and only son for you and for me. And so when we're talking about why Christmas matters, this is the significance of Christmas. That God looked at a broken world, and I don't think I have to convince you today, Christmas Eve 2020, that our world is broken. But God looks at our broken world and the mess that we created and says, I still love those people so much that I'm going to give my son. And Jesus came and Jesus died. And Jesus did not remain dead, but rose from the grave, beating it, beating death, conquering sin, conquering the grave, and now offers new life to anyone who would place their faith in Jesus. I have a feeling some of you had a really bad year. I don't really have to go out on a limb 
to say that. But the reality is, is in light of all of the chaos of this year, I believe this could still be your best year yet. This could be the year that you receive the gift of Christmas. And like any gift, you actually only have one responsibility. When given a gift, you have one responsibility, and that is simply to receive the gift you have been given. And so on Christmas Eve, and I'm thinking about what I could share with you, there was nothing more I wanted to share with you than what we call the good news of the gospel. That God loves you. That God gave his son for you. And that is what Christmas is all about. So I'm going to pray. And uh, during that prayer, I'm going to thank God for Christmas. And then I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond. And whether you're in the room or watching online, I would just submit to you that if you are gathered with us today, and you do not yet have a personal relationship with Jesus, that you would give your life to Jesus today, that you would acknowledge what Jesus has done for you in reaching out to you, that Jesus loves you, and this could truly be your best Christmas yet. Would you pray with me? God, I thank you for what we celebrate on Christmas. We celebrate a love that we didn't deserve, a love that we didn't earn, but that was freely given. But there was a great cost to your love for you. That Jesus came, that Jesus lived, that Jesus died in our place for our sin, taking the punishment we deserved so that we could go free. And your word says that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. And so I ask, Lord, in this moment, whether here in person or online, people listening today would be moved by your spirit to respond that you would let people know in the way only you can that you love them and that your gospel is true. So in this moment, it's Christmas Eve, I want you to ask yourself a question. Have you received the gift of Christmas? Do you have a relationship with Jesus? If not, I can't think of a better moment than this one. In the chaos of this year and all that has gone wrong, Jesus loves you. And Jesus wants to forgive you. And Jesus one day is gonna restore what has been broken, but he asks you to trust him. He asks you to receive the gift he is offering you. So if you're here, even online, I would just ask you to do a simple gesture and then we're gonna pray one more prayer and then move on. But please don't let this moment pass you by. If you're here and you have not yet begun a relationship with Jesus and you want to, I'm not gonna make a spectacle of you, but would you just raise your hand? Would you just raise your hand if that's you? I see your hand. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else in this room? Online? There's nothing magical about raising your hand, but it's just a declaration of I am going to submit my life to Jesus. I'm going to trust Jesus. If that's you, I, I want you to pray this prayer. Jesus, Thank you for Christmas. Thank you for loving me so much that you came, that you lived, 
that you died in my place for my sin, that you rose from the grave and that you want a relationship with me. God, I don't understand everything about what it means to follow you, but I want to follow you. And I'm trusting in you for the forgiveness of my sins. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, would you join me in welcoming anybody who's prayed that prayer? Could we give a round of applause to the people who prayed that prayer? If that was you, I'd like to connect with you. I would like to give you uh, a a new believers packet to help you get started on your faith journey. If you're watching online, just email the church office and we will help you out with next steps. God bless you and welcome to the family of God. To close our service now, hopefully you got one on the way in. We have these electric candles, okay? And on the bottom, there's a little switch. You can flip that switch and it should light up. And at this time, I'm gonna invite you to stand as we close our service in singing Silent 